Hello, fellow Neeps. Well, I'm back. So I decided to take the weekend off because there has been a lot of stuff going on with my sticker store and some kind of crazy stuff that happened with it. Uh, in short, basically something happened and somehow everybody that purchased anything in November got refunded. Uh, so if you got refunded and then you got an invoice back, I'm not double charging you. It's, uh, I'm just trying to recoup a lot of the accidental refunds. Well, maybe not accidental, but yeah, something happened, everybody got refunded. So please, if you order something, please pay the invoice. So because of a lot of the stuff that's been happening with the sticker store and just keeping up with videos and stuff, over time, I just kept getting sleep deprivation. I guess sleep dead is what it's called, I think. And so I just had to take a break for the weekend. And I think from now on, it might be a good idea just to take the weekends off so that I can catch up on sleep or whatever. Um, so hopefully that goes fine. I'll see how it goes. And I'll be posting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you could guys could work that into your schedule, that would be amazing. Honestly, I've been having a lot of setbacks lately and I had one really good month of almost making it out of neat them poverty. And now I was just set back. Luckily with some of the stuff I've done, I was able to recoup a lot of the losses. So it, in the end, it wasn't a big deal, but it was a big scare. Uh, but people have setbacks in their lives all the time. All you can really do about it is just keep going and just keep working at it. Eventually it might be, it might be three steps forward, two steps back, but eventually you come back stronger and better for it, I think. Cause if the same thing happens again, I have ways to counteract it. I've thought of ways to counteract it. So. Hopefully this never happens again and this is the last time something like this happens. So today we're going to be drawing something around my house that I think is pretty cool is my CRT TV. I don't actually have a proper flat screen TV or anything because I can't afford one frankly and so Honestly, I think maybe just like when it comes to playing like retro games or cons or older consoles, a CRT gives off like the better nostalgia vibe than like a flat screen TV. Cause like, even though it's not like objectively a better option, it feels like nostalgic. There's something like almost like a collectible. It feels nice. feels like it reminds me of uh, my childhood when I used to play video games with my cousin or something. That's what it reminds me of. And uh, it just gives me like good feelings, even though it's sometimes difficult to see the text on the screen. It's not the highest resolution. Uh, it's just feels nice. It's nostalgic. So this is my flat screen TV here. Cha cha. And I have a PlayStation 3 connected to it. And my silver play button, of course, in the back. I just haven't found a good place for it. Uh, this is kind of filled with random stuff, but I feel like I like it that way. It makes it more, it makes it more charming to me. So today we're gonna be drawing on the floor here because this is the closest place to the TV I have. I'm gonna be using the Wujirushi Pocket Notes. And for my pen, I'm just gonna get a random pen out of here and see. We'll be using the Pentel uh, brush pen here. This is gonna be kind of interesting because typically for a something that's more rigid, like a engineered thing, like a TV or like a car, you typically want to use pens that are easier to control and less variation. But since 
I have a pen here that has a lot of variation and a lot of unique strokes, it's gonna be harder to control and get that sort of like rigid engineered feel. So I'll see how this goes. And maybe I can try to uh, pull some tricks from my sleeves to actually make it work. So it is 20, 23, uh, December, uh, six. Yes, there we go. And now, where should I start? I should start always with an outline of my thing I'm trying to draw. So I'm gonna try to use like some quick strokes in one direction so I keep, keep the lines kind of straight. So if you use kind of flicks with the brush pen, it leaves sort of like this kind of mark, like, like a sort of uh, brushed looking mark because when you go slow it drags a lot of ink out along with it so it makes the makes the marks a lot more uh, opaque but if you want a little bit like textured lines you go fast There we go. It's not perfect, obviously, but I'm just going to start drawing some of the little objects I have here, like this little sack here. And then maybe I can draw the top of the counter or thing, I don't know what it's called, TV stand. This is just a desk that's repurposed. And then the PlayStation, there's a lot of straight lines in this, so. So I just need to go a little bit quick, a little bit more abstract because this is a brush pen and it doesn't, I will, this wouldn't be my first pick for this kind of stuff. There we go. Maybe I can go a little bit slower. I don't know. Maybe for the more detailed parts I can. But for the less detailed parts, I think it's more beneficial just to like speed it up. Just to have the, like the Lego car here or something. I have a lot of little trinkets I just like to collect. Little, little car and then a little Lego person here. They're kind of dead. <laughs> I killed them. In the back here, there is the, the play button. I can kind of draw the shadows, like the undersides of something, a lot darker and then the top sides because that makes it look like there's a shadow, like an overcast shadow. I think that makes it come off as more realistic. 
that's definitely a benefit of um, using a brush pen for sure. Then I can have this stereo here. Maybe I don't need to be as fast as I thought I needed to be, but I guess there isn't really any rush. Seems like the lines of going slow because I have a very steady hand. They seem to be coming out fairly straight anyways. So maybe the the way I did the lines mattered less than I initially thought. But we all learn. Here is the bottom of it. Has some buttons. Get some of the detail. My pen is starting to um, my pen is starting to accumulate a lot of ink on it, so I'm just gonna draw a thick line here. Give it some like artistic looking value, but it's just can also convenient at the moment. This thick line here will help clear the ink from it, but it also looks like a shadow for the underside of the banister. So I'm gonna go with that. Just on the fly sort of calculations. Then I also have a little Lego truck on top of this. So this, just adding a little bit more detail into the truck here. Nothing too special, just doesn't need to be so detailed either. I don't know, I'm just drawing stuff that kind of works. This truck is like kind of cool. It's like a crane on top of the, it's like a mobile crane. It just kind of plops itself down. I've seen construction sites have this before. Not construction sites, but like when they Replace the billboards on stores. They use one of these. And then just maybe have like the outline of this little top part here. Then the thing goes down. There's a little hook here. There we go, looks about right. Then there's um, some books or, or some movies here. little thing for a tripod. Um, just some random stuff on the desk, cause, just cause. Then there's this drawer here that I can draw. Gotta have really precise hands for this. I know not everybody has super precise hands, but I'll just take what I can use to my advantage. Then there's this Trinitron. I can draw the top ridge of it. There we go. For these Trinitrons actually, 
I've heard that they sell for quite a bit from because of Smash Brothers tournaments because they have very low latency, which I thought was kind of interesting. Even though it seems like a cheap hunk of garbage that I got from my grandparents, it's actually worth quite a bit. I'm going to drawing like some of the ridges here. Got the Sony. Sony. And then this part here the bottom just like integrating parts of its design that I see on it there we go that seems to work quite well actually There we go. I just sort of darken the outline a bit to emphasize it. And that gives off like quite the unique look here, I must say. I didn't actually think this would end up looking pretty good because I didn't think that using a pen like this would be good for this scenario, but I guess it, it works pretty well. And there's a little cheap cheap here as well. I can draw a little cheap cheap, a little cheap cheap plushie. I actually got that plushie in New York is kind of funny. And then this is, I think it's about done. What else can I add? Hmm. I think it's just good as is, to be honest. There's enough detail on it. So in the end, this was the final drawing. I think it turned out pretty good. It also might be because I'm not sleep deprived like I was last week. I still am very tired though, to be honest. I'm just getting better. But I was surprised on how the lines came out. Um, even though I thought that generally with so many straight lines, you'd want a, a f like more of a fine line pen with not as much variation. But it kind of gives off like this nice sort of variation in the lines it makes it less boring looking when you use the brush pen it sort of gives like this character to it if you know what i mean and also it's like it's nice that you can highlight some of the shadows and the ridges here like the top ridge of the ridge in the crt to hold in the glass i make it darker or the top ridge in the youtube play button i can make it darker so that it adds sort of like this shadow to it i think that's a very unique characteristic of the brush pen that you can only really get with brush pens. That's what I love about using brush pens or sometimes just using a pen that steps out of your comfort zone. You get a lot of unique things like this. And for the people who like to use my videos as a draw along, please, if you would like to submit your artwork that you made to my Twitter, retweet it uh, to Alisa's Art Diary, or to uh, at me and tag me on Instagram with your picture. Um, yeah. Bye.